name is Marcus Peck and I'm working at the Department of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at the Medical University of Vienna. We are a fairly large department that's dealing with the treatment and diagnosis of all different aspects of uh, gastroenterologic and liver diseases. The study, study we conducted here was a study on the use of low-dose pegylated interferon in patients with end-stage renal disease and chronic hepatitis C. Uh, when we started uh, with the study, there was no randomized trial on the use of pegylated interferon in patients with uh, end-stage renal disease and chronic hepatitis C. And we decided <coughs> to conduct a study on two different doses, both lower doses of pegylated interferon alpha-2A in this difficult-to-treat patient population. We were aware of the fact that it would be also interesting to maybe use combination therapy in this patient population, but then decided against this because there were no data available and the scarce data that was available was hinting at a quite uh, difficult safety profile of combination therapy in these patients. So we initiated this multi-center, multinational trial uh, in 2004 and we were able to randomize 85 patients into this trial. Initially we even wanted to randomize more patients but it turned out that it was quite difficult to find such patients uh, for our trial especially in the Western world because the incidence of chronic hepatitis C in hemodialysis patients seems to be declining. So uh, we randomized 41 patients and 45 uh, 44 patients into a group with 135 micrograms of PEG interferon alpha 2A versus 90 micrograms PEG interferon alpha 2A per week. Uh, the safety profile of this treatment was actually quite fine. We had five serious adverse ev events in the higher dose group and one serious adverse event in the 90 micrograms per week group and only a few of them could be related to the treatment uh, while the treatment was in general quite well tolerated. As expected, the incidence of anemia was uh, slightly higher than in the general uh, HCV treated population. Uh, in particular, the rate of hemoglobin drops below 8.5 grams per deciliter was between 20 and 25 percent. Uh, of the patients and the dose of EPO. Uh, several patients, of course, were on EPO even before the start of the treatment, had to be increased in, in quite a few of these patients. SVR was 39% uh, versus 36% of the patients, and there was no uh, significant difference between the SVR rate in both groups. So it can be concluded that actually low dose uh, treatment is quite a uh, effective in these patient population because uh, treatment efficacies of about 35 to 40 percent for PEG interferon monotherapy are actually quite good. Uh, the uh, genotype distribution in this study was around 30, uh, 75 percent of patients with genotype 1 and the rest of the patients being genotype 2 and 3. Uh, one peculiarity uh, of our patients was that HCV viral load was actually uh, quite low in those patients. Uh, a considerable proportion of patients had uh, viral loads below 400,000 units per milliliter and of course SVR was related also to the viral load uh, with an SVR of uh, over 60% in patients with uh, a viral load below 400,000 units per milliliter and only uh, around 10 to 20 percent in patients with higher viral loads. Also viral kinetics in this patient population was a very good predictor of sustained virologic response, uh, in particular in the lower dose group, because patients that were HCV RNA negative after 12 weeks of treatment in the 90 micrograms per week group uh, had a positive predictive value of a sustained virologic response of 88% uh, while this value was in the 135 micrograms per week uh, group around 61%. So overall, uh, the, even though this is a difficult to treat patient population, tolerability was quite good 
and also the efficacy of treatment around 40% was actually not too bad. So we would conclude that pegylated interferon alpha-2A monotherapy is not a bad treatment option for patients with chronic hepatitis C and end-stage renal disease on hemodialysis. And since ribavirin seems not to be a very good partner for in, in, these, in this particular patient group, we are looking forward to uh, some of the new uh, directly acting antiviral drugs that might be able to improve uh, sustained virologic response in these patients. Thank you very much.